Good day students. This is going to be a short tutorial on how to scale um, images using Inkscape and GIMP. Okay, the first thing, this is a lot of you would have received these PDFs that you'll need to extract information from. Okay, and they will contain drawings. Some will have scale bars, some won't. So you'll need to find something in the drawing that you can use as a reference. So door swings are typical. So a single door, typically 900 or 850 wide. Uh, you can measure sofas, baths, cars. Okay, obvious things. Okay, you're never gonna get this 100%, but if you do have a scale bar, that does help. So like we've got here, we have a scale bar here. Excuse the, my apologies. Um, yeah, so you've got a scale bar over here that you can use. Okay, so that is handy. The first thing you need to do is once you've got the PDF, open up GIMP. Okay, open up GIMP and you're going to open this PDF. Okay, so you can simply drag and drop it into the screen. Okay, that also works to open or you can go file open as. Now this is the most important thing that you've got to remember. When you pull in a PDF, you need to select what page you want to pull in. So I'm just going to use this page because I want to extract, extract the drawings. And you need to make sure that you maintain a resolu resolution of 300 dpi, especially in this type of work. Okay, so you're going to maintain the 300 dpi and you're going to go import. Alright, so now we have the drawing imported. This is going to be relatively easy because I can use this one to scale the rest because technically they look all the same scale but if you don't have the same situation there's another technique I'll show you in Inkscape how to do it. But essence we're going to extract the information that we need and we're going to convert this to an image. So all I actually need from here is this information. I'm using the crop tool. Make sure that you say delete crop pixels and you're going to delete untick this if this is enabled because I'm going to crop everything. So once I hit crop you'll notice it's reduced the size of this image because this is all I'm after. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to correct the colors depending on the scan quality. So it's pretty straightforward. You're going to click on the color tab. You're going to go to desaturation and you're going to desaturate the image. So it's, it's become a black and white image in essence. Then all that I'm going to do is going to go to curves. Then in curves, I'm going to remove some of the white noise that you've seen around the page just so that it's easy, easier to work with. Okay. So there are, that looks good, brilliant, press OK. Now you would have noticed I've got a nice, clean, black and white image. All I'm going to do now is once this image is to the correct scale, I'm going to go File, Export As, and I'm going to export this on my desktop as a JPEG. Remember, you can use this option to see the file extension, so you can see what file extension you need to use, but if you know it off by heart, you can simply type it in, and GIMP will understand what format you're trying to export it as. But remember, use this option in the beginning. So it's either PNG or PD, um, PNG, or you want to make it a JPEG. Okay, so don't worry about the quality. Export. All right, so now on our desktop, I'll have to move it over. We're going to have an image. Fantastic. So here's our image. Okay. So, open up Inkscape now. Okay, what's important is you need to understand, you need to work with scale. So we'll just have to start a new document. So let's just try and set up Inkscape to work with the type of scale that we want to work with. The first thing I recommend you go and do is set up the page size. Okay, so you can right click in the view and document properties. So here you can literally go and change the settings here, or some of you might have to click sorry this arrow over here and you'll need to go to document properties okay so let's start with an a1 sheet a1 a2 okay here orientation it depends so I'm gonna keep this portrait because those images were in portrait so I'm gonna leave it just like that okay great close that now we've got an a1 portrait okay if you want to double check that at any point you can just go and click on these Sorry, you can click on that arrow again, document properties, and you'll see it's an A1. Okay, good. Now, just make sure that you set your units to millimeters. We're gonna be working with millimeters. All that you need to do now is bring in this image. So again, you can drag and drop this image, drag and drop it in. I will open up this little dialog. You keep everything as is. 
Okay, now one thing to, that is important to remember when you're working in Inkscape is that you might have to go and set your preferences, so document properties, that's good, sorry, it's preferences, so file, uh, let's edit preferences. All right, imported image. I was trying to keep this, because I do a lot of this printing, and we print downstairs, try and make sure that this is all 300 dpi. What's neat about the new Inkscape as well, if you use the rendering, you can start enabling, you can switch this on if you've got a good graphics card and it'll make working with the images a lot better. And you can also set image quality so that it doesn't use all your machine's resources. But play with these settings, see what works. Okay, but this exercise, most of your machines, machines should be good. If you're gonna use the lab maybe, if you if you've got an old machine maybe just use the lab computer lab all right so there's enable that good now now I've got an image now we need to work out some sort of scale all right so your image is in you're gonna to go to your layers so in layers you can select your image over here as well now the first thing I always try and do is lock I switch on this lock so that when I scale the image the proportions are locked okay so that's very handy now I need to find a, a, a dimension that I can work with. So I've got a dimension right over here, which I can use, I've got a scale bar. So remember the bottom scale bar is in meters, the top is in feet. All I'm gonna do now is drag a, a, a grid, a guide. So I'm gonna drop a guide as accurately as possible. Just remember you can fine tune the guide. Now, now that I've got a guide in, I need to measure out six meters. So let's open up our calculator, okay. So paper, so we need to work out how to scale this. Okay, so calculator, good. Now it's pretty straightforward. Six meters, so 6,000, remember millimeters, we need to get it to scale one to 50 on an A1 sheet, or it doesn't matter what any sheet, you need to scale it to one to 50 or one to 100. I'm gonna use one to 50 in this instance, so pretty straightforward. 1 divided by 50 will give me the ratio. So 0, 0,02. All I need to do is go 6,000 times by 0 0.02 equals, that is 120 mils. Okay, so that'll be 120 mils on my sheet. Good. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to double click on this guide. Okay, I'm going to say, Duplicate, so it duplicates the guide, double click on the guide again, you'll see the little hand appears, double click. And I'm gonna say relative to change. This is X direction, this is Y. So here I'm gonna go X direction, and I'm gonna type in 120 mils. Good, if I zoom out now, you would have noticed it's created two guides, fantastic. Now I'm gonna use my ruler. Now your ruler, if you switch on the snapping here, and you go through the advanced settings, you can snap it to all kinds of information. What I like to, if you look at my screen, just try and copy what I do. But you can also, trust me, play with this. This, this will probably won't be enabled, so make sure that's enabled. That's critical for later, and I'll explain that. Cool. So now, in the view, I'm going to click and drag. Now, if you use control, it will lock it in degrees, so it locks it at certain degrees, and you can set these up as well. But I'm going to go to the end here and drop it. So you can see I've got six, six, six hundred, uh, sorry, I've set my scale. I'll get to that in a minute. So it must be 100. You'll see it'll change 120 mils. So scale one, just remember that this is one to one. You're scaling at 100%. Okay. There's no scale factor. In essence, it's true. So that's 120 mils on the sheet. You can go and measure on the side of your sheet. You can even measure the page if just to double check. And you see it's 594 by 841 because it's a cap. Okay. So this is a handy tool. So I've got this to the correct scale. So what I need to do now is select the image and I need to scale this image so that this six marker is meets this second guide, grid line or guideline. Okay. Now in order to do that, if you click an image once, you see it gives you these scaling handles. If you click the image again in within the extents of the image, but in a blank space, you'll see that it'll alternate between rotation 
okay and you'll see you can set the rotation here at the bottom so you can work quite accurately with rotation okay so any of these you can actually go and play with rotation okay all right but you can set your rotation quite accurately so let me just undo that so you can set rotation but what I want to do is click again click again now I want to move this marker you'll see that it gives you a marker in rotation I can move this marker somewhere so I've moved this marker right over here and if you click the marker again you'll notice it gives you these gray faint lines as well so if I click away and I click this image you'll see that that faint gray line still appears now what that does is if I stretch uh, undo if you hold shift and stretch you'll notice it'll scale from that reference marker that I've established so that's very neat so I can zoom in and I can really get hold shift down again so it must be shift and then you click please look at the icons on the side so it's shift and left click at the same time voila so now I've technically scaled this image to the correct scale on an A1 sheet so this should be if I measure measure anything in the drawing now so if I go and measure but in order to add the correct scale if I add 50 to that now if I go and measure the car for example in mills so let's just drag this from so click and drag so let's go from and hold control down so I'm going to go from there grab this grip hold control down so it locks it in X and Y you'll notice it's 4.5 meters okay with 4.5 4.8 there we go ignore this here's the dimension so it's adding this scale you can also add this you can take a snapshot of this so you can move around that's quite handy but remember as you move it it will disappear okay so that's quite handy so I'm gonna hold controller down again and you can see the scale that's actually kept it there for the time being that's good to know all right so here you can double check those dimensions every time so you can go and measure a door for example so from the wall look it doesn't have to be 100% accurate but you can see it's close to 900 so that's that's ideal so you know now that this drawings to scale okay so once we've done all of that we can grab the image and now we can simply move the image so it fits on the page now it's either going to be an a1 or a2 that's totally up to you and you can see the page outline over here if you want to use this image again you can simply duplicate it I'll explain duplicate the image so we've got two images now great so now that I've got two images the first image I'm going to use I'm going to switch this one off for the time being and if you want to crop an image in Inkscape what you need to do is you need to create a shape just make sure that your fill and your just make sure that fill and stroke is kind of preset but I'm just going to draw a rectangle so this will become my cutting line or crop line you can adjust this at any point just remember if your fills automatically on you won't see the information below switch off the fill keep the stroke so you know where the shape is so maybe add a stroke and make it red so it's easy to see and maybe just change again this works so point three point you'll, you'll be learning a lot of line weights so you can use your line weights now if you look in the sheet you'll see that it'll actually produce a line to that scale okay great so I'm gonna oops I'm making it let me just click it again so let's go and edit the shape itself not create a new shape you can use the drag icon or you can use this icon as well edits good so say now I want to crop this image so I'm going to use the square to crop okay so what I need to do now is in layers I need to select this rectangle and I need to select this uh, use control so keep control down and select the the shapes that you want to use to clip the image so if I go to object now and I go to clip and I say set clip you would have noticed now it's used that shape to clip this image so just remember Inkscape is not like it's not an image editing software it's it's vector it's not roster so you have to use vector graphics to edit and crop your images you can right click on the image and you can release clip if you want to see the whole image okay but you can say crop image to clip and then it's permanent so that's good as well so that's what I want to maybe do so go to crop image to clip and then you can release clip 
okay, release clip, then you'll notice that the image is gonna to stay to the correct size. And that's advisable because you're getting rid of redundant pixels, that's important. Now that you see, I can get rid of that rectangle, but maybe I'll leave it for the elevations. Now I've got my sheet set up and it's to scale. And I know that this is an A1. Guess what, I can add a new sheet now. So here it's telling me, I wanna make a new sheet A1, it'll drop a sheet next to it. I'm gonna grab image two, and I'm gonna move image two onto sheet two. Now, if you wanna work just here, it'll tell you what sheet you wanna work on. Just remember sheet one, sheet two. So now in sheet two, I can do the same thing again. I can put the elevations in the sheet, okay? Just like that, create another shape, and I can simply do the same. If, remember to switch off your snaps because it does get annoying sometimes. So here I'm gonna create another clip. Again, rectangle and that shape, object, clip, set clip. And I'm also gonna do that same exercise. So I'm gonna just say, a crop image to clip, great. I'm not gonna remove the clip, I'll leave it in place for now. You can use any shape for a clip, by the way, so up to you. Now in essence, if I want to go print downstairs with import to go and trace this, there we go. Or simply, I can set my scale and I can start measuring information off this drawing to help. Okay. Now one last thing I wanna show you, this is important. For those of you who have your elevations on a separate page, what you can also do is you can now use these. So if you know how the elevations work, you can then use these guides and move them around. So once you've got the plan to the correct scale, you can move the guides. Okay, so you can move the guides to the extent of the building or something that you can reference. Now I can simply go and scale. So you can see that this will be shorter. So you can see now that I can scale this information. I can snap this and then scale this image again and repeat that same exercise as I did. Okay, so that's an option if your elevations are on a separate page and you wanna make sure that they match the plan. So you use the plan and you can create more guides. Just remember, I can do it in this direction as well. So these guides I can use. Okay, so this is very handy, very, very handy. Okay. So I hope that this, this will help you um, scale your images. And remember the last thing we need to do now, if you want to print this downstairs with import, all you need to do now is export this document to the correct size. So if I go to file and I go to export, now with export, you'll notice it opens up a new dialog box on the side here, which I've just closed, my apologies, so export. So what you need to do is you need to export document or pages or page I'm going to export document so it exports all of the document and here in the settings I'm going to make sure it's PDF I'm going to pick a location to save now so I'm just going to put this on my desktop just remember to change this to PDF here as well sometimes I notice that is a pain so I'm just going to press save now and you'll notice that it will make this a PDF now if I go to my desktop and I open this PDF now Okay, my apologies, let me just do that again. So I'm gonna say page rather. You can see it's got pages. I can just simply export again. It will, re it will replace, let me just close this file quickly, my apologies. Uh, close that again and just export again. It will rewrite that file. And you'll notice now that this PDF will be in two pages. And they're both A1 sheets. So if you wanted to go downstairs and print this with import, you'll notice it will print these two sheets. Just remember to switch off any other vector graphics that you don't want to see. But in essence, if I go and measure this now, you'll notice that this will be two scale on an A1 if you print downstairs with import. Okay. All right. I hope this video helped.